Hello, I'm Don Mitchell. Welcome back to 2000% Nation, the book that helps you to expand God's kingdom by more than 20 times, improving it all the way. Uh, in this uh, video, we'll be continuing with Lesson uh, 10, uh, which addresses what the goals of for-profit companies should be, other than just earning a profit, as we discussed in the last uh, part of uh, this uh, chapter, uh, the fulfilling God's purposes is a fantastically effective way to actually increase profits of a company. So there's a great irony involved here that companies are explicitly doing things uh, that uh, you know actually get in the way of achieving the full fruitfulness that God would like to have for them. So uh, today I'd like to begin by looking at how to exponentially increase stakeholder benefits in ways that strengthen the stakeholders' abilities and encouragement to cooperate with the company. And here I'd like to begin by quoting the book of Judges, chapter 20, uh, verse 11, in the New King James Version. So all the men of Israel were gathered against the city, united together as one man. It's one thing to lower the cost of supplying, producing, providing, acquiring, using an offering for everyone from suppliers to customers and end users. That's quite another thing to also make the same offering 20 times more beneficial to all those who supply, produce, make available, purchase, and use the same offering. The combined effect of the cost reductions and benefit increases is to make an offering at least 400 times more beneficial to all stakeholders. Most for-profit companies limit themselves to considering just a few ways of improving offerings that will lead to somewhat more of them being purchased while also increasing near-term profits, the stream of cash generated and the value of owner stakes in the firm. That perspective is quite inadequate for increasing stakeholder benefits to their fullest potential for serving God in the ways he wants and for becoming a more profitable company. One reason such opportunities are missed is due to leaders failing to consider how helpful it is to have more of God's support for their activities, as well as for all stakeholders to feel much more encouraged to cooperate with the company. The added effectiveness that flows from the support of both sources is more than enough to multiply benefits by exponential amounts and also expand by a similar degree profits and other traditional measures of good business performance. The Bible often advocates unity, pointing out that division leads to disaster. Yet many believers blithely assume they should separate their business decisions from seeking God's support and that of the stakeholders who contribute to their firm's performance. Consider as an example how many organizations have prospered while they were thought by stakeholders to be serving godly purposes and how quickly uh, the same firms collapsed uh, when it became apparent that the self-interests of a few were in fact trampling on God's and everyone else's interests. Keep the importance of unity in mind, let's look at how to make such benefit breakthroughs. For the right changes, first be sure to consider all stakeholders, or those affected by the company, and to look for much larger benefit gains than for-profit companies typically do. While such a search may seem overwhelmingly difficult at first, experience shows that achieving that kind of a result may not, in fact, be especially challenging for those who persevere while engaging in the appropriate steps. Here's an example. Thinking about educating people in how to gain more benefits for an offering. While most people don't even read the directions for using a newly purchased offering, providing major benefits from learning more about offerings use can be enough incentive to gain almost anyone's attention. For instance, a van purchase might come with a book that describes how to start high-income part-time businesses that require such a vehicle, along with membership in a web portal that provides leads for meeting those who wish to purchase such services. Employees of for-profit companies uh, might be uh, provided with classes on establishing profitable firms to supply their current employers. Suppliers could be presented with research about how to make making more beneficial components or providing more helpful services could lead them to opening major new markets and to enjoy increased profits. Here's another useful perspective. Beyond educating people about using an offering, look at how valuable benefits can be greatly multiplied by improving the offering. The development of the iPod 
Apple's portable music player in the iTunes Store, Apple's website for low-cost music downloads, demonstrates this concept. When Apple was developing the iPod, the company also looked at how to reduce the cost of acquiring music and making the process of doing so easier, faster, and with better sound quality. By combining superior hardware and software with a new way of compensating music producers, the potential for enjoying mobile listening soared to previously unanticipated levels while greatly reducing user costs. By making single songs inexpensively available and slicing the time needed to download and to find music on the player. After educating people and improving the offering, identify valuable benefits people want that aren't yet available and find ways to provide those benefits. As an example, consider Apple's approach to interoperability of its electronic devices. People often use the same electronic material on many different devices, from laptop computers uh, to uh, desktop computers to notebook computers to portable recording devices to mobile telephones. Long before electronic interoperability was so important, Apple designs its iMacs, its desktop computers, MacBooks, its laptop computers, iPods, iPhones, iPads, the tablet computers, and iTunes Store uh, to provide easy ways to access the same software and audio and video recordings on any of Apple's devices. As a result, more could be accomplished by users and the cost of acquiring such material were reduced by limiting the need for multiple copies. In many cases, a for-profit company will initially lack the knowledge to identify and create so many valuable improvements. A wise company will seek world-class partners and suppliers whose complementary skills make it much easier to conceptualize and provide benefit and breakthroughs. In addition, public contests conducted over the internet can attract talented people and outstanding solutions as Gold Corps demonstrated finding better ways to prospect for gold. See the ultimate competitive advantage for more information on this example. And as Procter & Gamble has shown in accelerating profitable new product developments. I further recommend that for-profit companies look into ways that new classes of benefits can be developed that such organizations usually overlook. For instance, if users are struggling with moral and spiritual issues while employing an offering, for example, a potentially addictive but legal product, such as a prescription painkiller, the offering provider could also offer assistance in strengthening and encouraging those who would like to improve their moral and spiritual fruitfulness. Here's a simple example. A help page on an internet site might also include information for those with desires to improve morally and spiritually, potentially including Bible verses, testimonies, and best practices for those who have made excellent moral and spiritual progress while using the offering. Let's now shift our attention to assisting competitors in copying the company's activities and offerings to help increase the firm's innovativeness by at least 20 times. Uh, here I'd like to uh, quote from the book of Joshua, chapter 8, verse 32. And there, in the presence of the children of Israel, he wrote on the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which he had written. Copying has a justifiably bad reputation in some circles. If you're discovered to have copied a student's paper in school, you'll receive a failing grade and may incur punishment. If you copy and publish what someone else wrote without giving the author appropriate credit, you may even be sued. Take a competitor's patent protected offering a copy and your competitor will probably use legal action to try to stop you from making your offering available. All of these examples have in common the idea of encouraging individuals and organizations to do their own work and to be respectful of what others have done so that the credit and profits to the innovators will not be diluted. As Joshua 8.32 indicates, Sometimes copying, however, can be a good thing, such as when we copy scripture to remind us of what God wants us to do. When accurately done, that copying is clearly preferable to people making up their own spiritual doctrines based on nothing more than their own personal preferences. Similarly, there are other occasions when protecting originality doesn't serve God's purposes. In business, fully protecting originality can have two negative social consequences that I would like to mention. First, a superior solution from an innovative for-profit company without competition will generate large increase in sales, profits, cash flow, and capital cost reductions. Most such organizations will choose to take it easy rather than pressing forward and add more substantial and valuable benefits. As a result, innovation may actually be reduced within what had been the most innovative organizations. 
Second, if competitors may not copy and the provider of superior solution isn't aggressive in making its offerings more available by expanding capacity, reducing costs and prices, most people in the world may never benefit from the innovation. These limitations on the usefulness of originality are defended by some in noting that innovators need large financial rewards to enable them to take the risks inherent in developing much better solutions and that most such restrictions on copying are limited in time by the duration of patent or copyright protection, making all such innovation eventually available for unlimited copying. God doesn't look at innovation that way. After all, he provides the resources and inspiration that lead to such, quote, originality, end quote. When we seek to accomplish his purposes, he doesn't hold back his power, knowledge, and presence from helping us. After we've been helped by him in such unlimited ways, why should we hold back access to his children for what he has provided? It's not like being forgiven by God of our sins and gaining salvation, then not forgiving those who wrong us. Jesus told parables disapproving of such behavior. In addition, research has shown that most innovative activities are primarily conducted by people uh, who are motivated simply by the joy of doing them, rather than with an eye uh, primarily of obtaining financial gain. When monetary incentives are offered to encourage creativity in making most kinds of profitable breakthroughs, the result is usually to reduce the rate of and productivity of innovation. Consider by contrast that anyone who is first to market with a major innovation will also continue to benefit as a result of this accomplishment with customers and stakeholders for many years to come. Consequently, the quote, no copy, end quote, period, isn't necessary to earning an attractive financial return for many kinds of innovative offerings and improvements. Ultimately, God wants us to realize that, much like the personal trials he sends to help increase our faith and to make us more fruitful for him, Having competitors who can be relied on to quickly copy and to begin offering our innovations is a great encouragement for innovators to make still larger, more frequent, and more substantial improvements. Naturally, a for-profit company can choose to gain legal protection for its innovations and then permit competitors to copy based on its own terms and timing for licenses. Done properly, such controlled permission to copy can accelerate market growth and increase profits for innovators while making industry offerings available to many more people at lower cost and with the addition of desirable improvements. Innovative for-profit companies that open the doors to permitting copying should organize their development efforts to make more frequent and substantial innovations. Such organization will be highly attractive to the most talented people who want to participate in making as much innovation as possible, helping to increase the company's innovative capacity company that becomes successful enough in this regard can, at some point, consider not even seeking any legal protection for its innovations, relying instead on innovative nimbleness and legitimate concern about being overtaken by copiers. In the next video, we'll begin considering how you can profitably solve large social problems as a way to generate at least 20 times more value and social benefits uh, compared to the company's increased offerings. A fascinating subject I know you'll enjoy learning about. In the meantime, thank you for listening. May God bless you, your family, and all you do in the name of Jesus. Goodbye for now. Take care.